Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to my, my new series. I've gone from a bit of a tangent away from the exam topics. Um, so the last series, if you remember, that was the ABD AZ140 exam, Microsoft exam topic series, about 30, 35 episodes. It was a long haul, um, but there's a, there's a topic that I've, I've kind of been reading into quite a bit and looking at. Um, as you saw in my introduction, that is Azure Stack HCI with ABD. And I thought to myself, you know what, I, I really think this would be a really good topic to share with everyone. Um, I think it's something people will find interesting. So I thought, why not do a series on it? Um, so yeah, this is what it is essentially. So you saw in the episode before, that was the intro episode, kind of what we're going to cover. So this is the first actual episode. Um, so we're going to have a bit of theory, and then we're going to do a lab. And I'm going to explain what the lab's about, because I'm going to deploy Azure Stack HCI as a sandbox within my uh, Azure environment. Uh, so I'll show kind of how, how to do that. So let's get started with this episode. So as I said, I'm trying something different with my uh, with my thumbnails as well. So this is the intro to Azure Stack. Uh, so this is part one, uh, and in today's episode, so this is this is a the, the intro to Azure Stack is the overall sort of topic. But today's episode, um, I'm going to cover what is Azure Stack and what is Azure Stack Hub, and then we'll go into the demo a little bit. Again, I want to try and keep it short and sweet. So we're going to do three episodes in the introduction to Azure Stack. So this is part one. Um, so. Azure Stack is, is uh, so what is Azure Stack for it, essentially? You know? So Azure Stack is a family of products that provide an extension to Azure to consistently build and run hybrid applications um, across data centers, edge locations, remote offices, and the cloud, obviously. The Azure Stack family consists of Azure Stack Hub, um, Azure Stack HCI, and Azure Stack Edge. It's got three, three levels or three different, different, different flavors of it, you could say. Um, again, Azure Stack is its efficient use of cloud technologies, and it's not just limited to migration scenarios. You know, it also plays a significant role with hybrid environments, with some computing resources remaining uh, in on-premises data centers. The Azure Stack products share some similarities or some characteristics that facilitate transition as well to, to hybrid cloud model, and those include, you know, your on-premises deployments, as we mentioned. Uh, close integration with Azure, if you want in that, which is, again, some of the topics we're going to be covering in this series. Modern technologies that accelerate replacement and consolidation of sort of legacy infrastructure as well. Page you use pricing, which is obviously mainly cloud, uh, using sort of same subscriptions, monetary commitments as well, and billing tools as Azure. So you've got that great integration with Azure, even though it's on premises, it's situated on premises. And finally, purpose-built, pre-configured, and Microsoft certified hardware uh, which is available either from Microsoft or you can even get them from third party vendors as well, which is quite cool. So, what is Azure Stack Hub? So, this is the first flavor, really. So, Azure Stack Hub allows you to deploy a subset of IaaS and PaaS services that are available in the um, Azure public cloud. Um, and you can deploy that into your own data center essentially. So, these services include VMs, virtual machines, app service, web apps, API apps. Uh, and, and functions. Also, you can use, you know, SQL, MySQL databases, containers, event hubs, key vault, IoT hubs, service fabric clusters, and Kubernetes clusters. So again, these are all services that you really, um, you can think about Azure when you think of these, or cloud, but then with Azure Stack Hub, it's going to allow you to do that on premises and hybrid as well. From a hardware standpoint, uh, each Azure Stack Hub uh, instance is an integrated system, which uh, essentially consists of sort of pre-built a uh, rack of between four to 16 physical servers. Each system has a set of well-defined interfaces and it exposes, that exposes only the functionality required uh, to manage its operations and implement its workloads. However, these interfaces don't provide direct access to the OS running on the physical servers. You can interact with the interfaces by using, you know, different sort of management and programming tools or equivalent to tools used in Azure as well. So these include web-based portal, you've got PowerShell, Azure PowerShell, Azure CLI, command line interface, uh, scripting tools, and sort of software development kits as well, like SDKs. That's a little bit about what Azure Stack Hub is. And this diagram as well is a really good diagram from Microsoft. It kind of explains it from a logical perspective. So again, you've got that Azure Stack Hub, right? you know, that, that kind of the... Um, which, is, which is obviously, um, it's pre-configured, but it's also uh, on-premises, really. Um, and then you've got those different services that we mentioned, so VMs, um, scale sets, databases, storage, etc. But then underneath that, that's where your infrastructure is, that, that IaaS and PaaS services sit on, so your sort of physical servers 
your switches, that sort of thing. And on the outside, you've got those users, the managed service providers, and the operators as well who manage all of it. Um, so again, similar, you know, similar to as you think like a data center. Really, if you think about it, you've got all your your applications and sort of services um, on the on the top, and underneath you've got the eyes and PaaS services, including that as your infrastructure at the bottom layer as well. And all those sort of switches and hardware physical kit below as well. So what is um, Azure? So what what Azure Stack Hub isn't as well. So it's a good thing to talk about what it is, but what isn't it? Well, it's important to understand it really because you know what, again when you're making these decisions around what's the best flavor to go for, is it Hub? Is it HCI Edge? It's good to understand what you can't do. So what it's not is it's not a replacement for virtualization technologies. So Azure Stack Hub isn't designed to replace an existing on-premises private cloud. Instead, it's designed to introduce the public cloud operating model in your data center. It's not a customizable infrastructure. So Azure Stack Hub relies on pre-configured, so that's a key word, pre-configured systems that are in constant um, sort of known state, uh, you know, without support for, for sort of customizing that hardware. It's not a solution that eliminates the need for infrastructure updates. Uh, so Azure Stack Hub requires that you update its infrastructure components regularly. However, you can perform the updates without having to take offline workloads running on that infrastructure. And finally, it is not a solution that eliminates that responsibility of underlying infrastructure either. So Microsoft hosts and manages Azure Cloud physical and virtualized infrastructure. You rely on availability service agreements, or SLAs, that Microsoft provides to evaluate platform and service, service resilience. With Azure Stack Hub, you host it uh, and manage that infrastructure. So that is your responsibility to implement and maintain that availability and resilience. So important difference there. Let's talk about some common use cases. So before we go into the demo, so again, latency and, and sort of bandwidth sensitivity workloads. So with, with that, that's that kind of use case. So this is Azure Stack Hub helps you address latency and connectivity constraints that sort of uh, preclude the use of Azure for workload hosting. Good use cases, disconnected workloads. So using the ability of Azure Stack Hub in the disconnected mode, you can introduce cloud capabilities to such environments as factory floors, cruise ships, and mine shafts as well. Mine shafts, that'd be a right use case. I wish it would be a strange one. Um, workloads that are subject to residency requirements as well. So just like allows you to provision IaaS and PaaS workloads that are subject to compliance or regulatory restrictions. So government really. For example, workloads in such as an audit, financial reporting, foreign exchange trading, online gaming, or even expense reporting. It's very interesting use cases. So let's move over to a demo now. So um, in this first demo, I'm, I'm just going to go through the tool or the service that I'm using to deploy the um, deploy the Azure Stack HCI into my demo. So have a look at the, the it's called Azure Act Jumpstart. So we're gonna have a look at that. Have a look at some of the, the use cases around that. And I'm actually going to prepare. Uh, I'm going to use Azure CLI to prepare and show you how we prepare it and how we deploy it. Uh, and that'll be it for the demo. We'll just deploy it, and then the next episode will actually go through what it's deployed, um, and you know, and how we've done that as well. Uh, so yeah, again, uh, let's jump over to the demo tenant. Welcome back. So we're not quite in the demo tenant yet. I just wanted to quickly show you um, this uh, Azure. Uh, well, it's not Azure. It's, it's, a, it's called um, Azure Act Jumpstart, basically. So this is what I'm using. I'll put the, the link to this in, in the URL to the description, but this is what I'm using to put uh, my, my Azure Stack HCI sandbox into my tenant. So essentially it's a de dedicated Azure Stack HCI sandbox in one click, and all you need is an Azure subscription to get started. It's obviously very, ex it's very, very expensive, so you need to be careful uh, with costs and stuff like that. But if we look at the sort of, um, you know, we want to kind of get started, but it has kind of your use cases. So a sandbox environment for getting hands-on with Azure Stack HCI and Azure Arc technologies. And this is kind of the, uh, I'm not sure if you can see that, I'll try and, um, so essentially we've got the, uh, this is the, inf in the architecture of it, where you've got your HCI box in your resource group, and you've got as your monitor, as your policy, as your log analytics, and also, um, you know, Defender for Cloud integrated with that. Then you've got on the outside, you've got Enter ID, which it integrates with. And then you've got all the sort of the, the um, AKS and all the sort of, uh, you've got Azure Stack cluster here as well. So again, and then as we go further down, you've got the Hyper-V host and the HCI box as your virtual environment. So um, as it says, it's capabilities are available in, you've got two nodes Azure Stack cluster basically that it deploys. Uh, and and when you do you do it through command line. I'll show the commands I'm going to do. But essentially, it just deploys everything. It takes a while. It takes a few hours to deploy. 
Um, but then you can do sort of virtual machine management. Uh, you can do the you got AKS service on the Azure Stack HCI. And then this tells you a little bit about the consumption costs as well. Um, and then different deployment options as well. So you can do it for either the bicep template or Azure Developer CLI. So I think I use the Azure Developer CLI template. Um, again, it does it shows you the automation flows. Also, very good website to have a look at. Definitely worth looking at. Gives you all the options of how to deploy it. Um, so uh, I want to actually deploy it in my tenant. So we're going to follow these instructions. Um, but I need to jump over to my my demo tenant. Um, but essentially, you, you you clone the Azure Arc Jumpstart repository, and then you do you make sure you're logged in. So I'm going to be using CLI as your CLI. So this is if you're using um, PowerShell. Um, you need to do login, but I'm already logged in. And then um, you basically do the az init command. You, you you browse. So once it's downloaded the 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 repository from GitHub, you actually browse to that folder and then use az init, and then that starts initializing. It. And then you just got a sub, couple of you know a couple of yes no sort of questions you need to do, and then that deploys everything. Once it's deployed, you can actually um, start your post deployment automation as well. And again, we'll do that in probably episode two. And you can also then delete it AZ down when you're done as well. So I've actually done the deployment and tested it and done AZ down already once in my environment. But I thought, you know, for the demo, uh, or for the, at least for, for this episode, um, let, let's actually deploy it. So I'm going to jump into my demo tenant now. And we'll go through the deployment process. Welcome back. Here we are in my Azure portal. And the first thing you want to do is launch our Azure CLI. So again, you can do this on PowerShell from a device if you want. I'm using as your the, the cloud shell PowerShell because it's just just easier for me. So I've already downloaded the um, the Azure Arc Jumpstart repository, um, but essentially you just do what you just do the git um, git clone. I'll do it in a second. I'll, I'll put it I'll put it on the screen so you can see it um, to to download it. So I'll let this launch, and then we'll go through the uh, okay. So here I'll just paste it in there. So that's that's what you need to do. I've already downloaded mine, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna repeat that because it'll just it'll just tell me that um, that I don't need to do it. We don't want to do AZ down either. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to browse to the location first. So if I just um, ls let's see oh, ls even. Uh, so the Azure Arc. So I want to go to cd. Azure underscore arc. Let's go ls again. So I think going to the, it says your underscore jumpstart. So let's go cd Azure underscore jumpstart underscore hci Azure underscore jumpstart underscore hci uh, box. Cool. So we're in there, and now we want to do what's called the AZ init, AZD init. Okay, so it says it's already initialized to. I don't wonder what it's doing there. Because I've already initialized it once. Okay, so I've already initialized it once, that's why, my bad. Right, okay, so now once it's initialized, then we want to do the azd up command and this will then actually deploy it so i've already initialized it which is why i got that error which is fine um so now i'm just starting initially the uh, bicep provider so what we'll do is this is obviously going to take quite a while um to do because there's, there's a couple of so what i'll do is let me i don't want to keep you on recording for, for all that time <laughs> so um once it's completed I will go through exactly what steps it's taken and how it deploys it. And at least I'll give you an idea rather than sitting here and, and watching the, the screen go down. So we'll let it roll for an hour or so and then we'll be back shortly. So that's taken, as it says there, uh, 20 minutes and 7 seconds to deploy. So as I say, it does just take a while. But if we go up to see exactly what it's done. Um, so from from here, a bit further up. Yeah, so this is where we did the AZD up, if you remember. Um, and then it goes through, connects to Azure, connects to your subscription, registers the Azure provider. Um, and it sees if you've got enough VM capacity in, so it's mine just gone Western Europe region. 
Um, again, within my demo time, I'm not too fussed. Then put in a username you want to use. You can use the Arc demo username, or you can, I've just specified my own. Then do I want to use Bastion for accessing HCI box host? So I've put yes. Uh, and then it goes through to retrieve the Azure, Microsoft Azure Stack HCI provider ID. Checks the existing stored Azure service principle, reusing any existing service principle. And then again, it, it goes to your subscription and your the location. Um, so here you can actually click on the link at any point and view the progress if you want. Um, so then it goes, creates your resource group, which it calls dkhcibox.rg, creates a log analytics workspace, creates a virtual network and a storage account, um, and then deploys the services. Um, again, you can view all the sort of, um, you can view through the Azure portal if you want, the sort of uh, provisioning all the resources. So that's essentially what I want to just show the provisioning of the HCI box. What we'll do is uh, in the next episode, we'll actually look at the services it's provided um, and look at maybe connecting and, and seeing, you know, how, you know, connect through the bastion. Uh, so yeah, just wanted to show the provisioning of my HCI box within my tenant in my sandbox. Uh, so yeah, first episode done and dusted, hopefully. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I've learned loads, obviously, doing the, this, this new series. Um, so hopefully, uh, again, drop me a comment. I've tried to put all the links that I'm kind of using in, in the description below. If you drop me a comment, a like, um, you know, obviously if you're not subscribed, please do subscribe. I've got loads more content coming. As I mentioned, I've got my Nerdio, uh, exam content as well that I want to do. Um, so loads of other content I'm planning this year. So please do subscribe. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. Until next time. Goodbye.